Uh, Let's just call a wild woman. Yeah, she um, she was going through a divorce, and her husband was being an ass to her. So I moved in and basically kicked him out. You moved in while he was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on. And he packed all this stuff out, threw it outside, and then um, he, 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 he wouldn't want to fight. I grabbed him, pinned against the wall, but he didn't want to fight. So he just left saying it's not fur this. I said, oh, well, life ain't fur, is it? So I booed him out of his own house. And then I just move in. That bear. I don't I didn't even own her a week. Jesus. We got on. I mean, the first year was brilliant. It was just like, I suppose we were still in love then. Yeah. But um, after that, it just went downhill rapidly. Did you find, obviously, because like, you're away and stuff, so obviously you've got this bird that you've met after a week. So relationships and stuff, has it been, like, difficult because of... You've not had... No, you've had far from an ordinary life, haven't you? What have, what have your relationships been like and stuff like that, like with women and stuff? You Have you been married, Sean? Yeah, three times. Three times? Yeah. Have you really? Yeah. Are you married now? No. What about you? I'm married, yeah. You're married? Been married for... Not to this one, though, that you were talking about. No, 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 not to the Mad Scouser, no. As, um, I've been married for about five years. Right. She's completely different to me. She's like, um, well, I, I've changed now. I don't, yeah. I don't do drugs no more. Do you think no. it's because you're older? No, I just think I've got a good woman behind me. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm settled. Yeah. You're um, content now. Yeah, I'm content. Yeah. So, come on, anyway, we need to... Let's get back to the juicy stuff that everyone wants to hear about. So, all this is going on, you... you st- so, you, you, if you quit the stock market So, now, I quit the stock market as a stockbroker while Peter was there on his first visit. So, now I've gone... F- I've chose to go full-time into the party scene. Okay. Peter's back in England now for about two years or so. Did you miss him? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because you have got, like, obviously an emotional attachment, haven't you? You're a team, like, working together as yeah. a team. Yeah. So, but I just continued to build it up, the criminal enterprise, with the connections Peter had helped me establish. Right. So Peter was my main protection as well. And you but he did introduce that. me to some tough people. Right, okay. Including, um, we'll just say a Mexican-American person, because he's got a bit paranoid about us. About saying his same yeah. stories about him, okay, yeah, who was who was connected to the Mexican mafia, the new Mexican mafia, who who became our, uh, I, I got into business with them as well, yeah. You got into business with the Mexican mafia, the new Mexican mafia. Shit. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about that. Like, how well, how do you get into how how do you just get into business with somebody like that? With what people like at Rancho Murrieta, there was a series of parties that we had, and the Mexican American person would come over. And um, he was dealing coke and weed, and I was dealing the E. And at one of these parties, a policeman just walked into the room. And the policeman who walked into the room said, I can smell weed from outside, nobody move, goes to grab his radio like he's going to call it and have us all arrested. So the Mexican American guy just pulls out his gun, points at the cop, says, The only one who's not leaving is you, MF. Everybody run. So we all run off into the night. Yeah. And we're thinking we're going to get arrested. I go to a nearby apartment. And um, we're like, should we flush our drugs? What's going to happen? The cop's going to come. There's like a helicopter coming. There's police sirens and everything. And I was like, bam, 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 bam. Knock on the door. Let me in. It's, it's him. We pulled the gun on the cops. So, so he says, don't open the door. Turn the lights off. Turn the TV off. If they've not got a warrant, they can't come in. If they knock on the door, don't answer it. And that's what happened. Thank and God you had him. Yeah, and at the end of the night, he goes, because you and your friends protected me, me and my brothers have got your back. Oh, amazing. So months later, I go over to the house. Right. There's all these lowriders on the street. And his brother answers the door, and he's looking up at me, and he's like, he hears my English accent. And he goes, damn, you talk funny, homie. <laughs> it's like, you, you, I guess you are from England. Come in and meet my homeboys. <laughs> So I go in the living room, and they're all in there, these massive tattooed Mexican-Americans. They've all got the chains on, little wife beater vest, shorts down below, 
the knees, all the prison tattoos, yeah. all kinds of weapons, slabs of coke, slabs of crystal meth, weighing machines. And I'm looking around the room at the biggest TV I've ever seen in my life next to a little TV with CCTV showing everything on the road. So they're looking yeah. out for the police are coming. Yeah. But I do a double take when I look at the TV. I'm like, hold on a minute, I've seen one of them before. It's got a rocket propelled grenade launch on top of the TV. A what? Rocket propelled grenade launcher. What the fuck? Shoots. You can put a missile in it and shoot down a helicopter, like no. a bazooka. Oh my god! And I still didn't know who they were. And I was in business with them for years. And it was only when I took the Mexican American guy back to his brother's house years later, the whole neighborhood was blacked out, and the police were out directing traffic with light ones, and they were all getting brought out in in handcuffs by a federal SWAT team, and it showed all the pictures on the news, and that said who they were then. And that's how I knew it. And that's how you found out. That's when I found out, yeah. I suppose it doesn't really matter, though. If someone's, like, got you back, you're just not, you're not even bothered, are you? You're not no, bothered the... he was a solid dude, our guy, who yeah. protected us in Arizona. Yeah, he was really, he really, really had that back. Obviously, I love and trust Peter the most out of everybody, but I would say after Peter, it, it, it was would have him. been him. Yeah. I got on with him as soon as we met. We, we got on sound. It was just like, we were just, like, double trouble, really. We were so much like one another. I didn't like his brothers too much. But he did He did tell me from the get-go, don't ever take wild man to my brother's house. They won't get along. They won't get along? Yeah. So you didn't do that then? No. Well, he did. <laughs> well. He turned up once. Well, he, did turn, he did turn up once. <laughs> and they were at the door with like AK-47s and mini machine guns. And I, oh. I, they let me in. They go, he's not coming in. And he doesn't just walk away. He's like, I'm not fucking, I'm not effing coming in. Who are you telling me I'm not? Oh, my And I'm, like, God. dragging him away, and he's, like, yelling at him. Did you not shit yourself, like, when he was kind of um, like that? Like, Yeah, I did. I half shit myself, but I half was my decision-making process was just scrambled by drugs as well. It gives you false bravery. Yeah. So, skipping forward now, you you both... Are you both in jail together? Like, so all this has been going on, you've... How did you get caught? What the hell happened? And and tell us about prison there, life. There was brought. witness statements. There was the fallout with Wildman and Skinner. Skinner became the main police informant. There was ten informants. So there was someone ratting on you in your ratting group. On us. Skinner, yeah, the main guy was my main salesman. Who I, the guy got the house who was living in the dumpsters before. He fell out with Wildman. He became an informant. May sixteenth, two thousand and two, was the first SWAT team arrests. And, um, Why I, was he doing that? Was he getting paid? Is that what happens? He was Why scared he for his it? life, apparently, because um, I was going to kill him. So that's why he started grassing? Yeah. He had some black gangsters he was hanging out with, and he formed, uh, there was like a conspiracy, whereby Wild Woman's apartment, while Peter was in uh, federal imita- uh, immigration deportation prison, Wild Woman's apartment was firebombed. <sighs> right. And then these the black gangsters showed up to take Wild Woman to safety. And she's like, I ain't getting a car with you with all my pills. <laughs> and we later found out that Skinner had orchestrated the whole thing. Shit. Firebomb comes right through the window, almost sets her on fire. So Peter's in deportation. And Skinner's thinking he's never going to get in, back in the country. So I hire a lawyer to expedite the process, get him out and fly him right back, smuggle him right back in again. So he's come back in. He's back in and now Skinner's terrified. Did that like three times, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So you've been snit. So, he's, so sn- mate, he's like conspiring behind your back and... So I, I, I know it's all got too heavy and I've quit the importation. Right. And just, I'm just chilling out in an apartment in Scottsdale with my bird... And May 16th, 2002, I'm on the computer. I'm back to doing stock trading. And it's like, bam, 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 on the door. And it's a SWAT team. And they came for Peter as well. So all simultaneous arrests. Yeah, they arrested all of us in, in, in the same day. What was, what was your day of arrest like? Oh, it was horrible because, well, I just took a massive big hit of crack. And like, I'm like, whoa. And then... And they just bang, bang, bang on the door. And I look, and it's the police. And I just opened the door. I went, oh, it's the police. And shut the door again. I thought, oh, shit, it is as well. So they said, they had the, like, guns out and all that. And 
my house had a gate. They knocked the gate into the front, like into the hallway. They come in and then get on the ground, get on the ground, shouting, bawling. They put the gun to you. Hands behind your back. They cuff us and put us in a van and didn't, know, didn't tell me what for, didn't say anything. Just took, basically just took, yeah. just took me uh, 